Okay, so this is the dev commentary video for I Want to Fly Sky High, the I Want to Be the Guy fan game that I made, uh, I think in from June to July, late June to it got released on in late July. And um, as you can see from everything from the title screen to the first screen and farther than that, it's inspired heavily by I Want to Fly the Far Away, the Tokoroten game that is well known for its uh, specific 32 pixel needle genre that it, and the bunch of FTFA likes that it sparked, and the uh, the deathless challenges that people have done. I think it's nine right now. Um, so I I really like from the moment uh, I started talking with PHG QED on Discord about FTFA. I was really interested in the design philosophies behind the game. I really liked how, like, specifically the jumps that it's famous for, where it takes specific jump heights, or it, it takes the farthest the kid can jump with a specific jump height in a 32 pixel grid and stretches it to its limit while also sticking to the aesthetic design that I really like, where it doesn't have any naked spikes. It does have a couple floating spikes, but none that are not touching anything. And I thought it was a very fascinating game. Um, and I hadn't really thought about needle design philosophies before that, so... I think that's another reason of why I like the game so much, because I that was like my first exposure to analyzing a creator's style, or at least a game's style, and then trying to make something based off of it, and to really understand what went into like the background behind the game. Um, so... As I said, this one, this game was made in uh, late June, I think, is when I started it. Or it was probably a bit earlier than that, but I really started developing it in late June. I think that was when I asked for testers in the server, in the IWC server. And then through from that to late July it went through the testing process i think i actually started this game closer to may i think uh, i don't know there was a while ago but um this game it was the first time i had tried making a fan game wasn't the first it wasn't the first time I tried to but it was the first time I was able to start making one but um, I asked in the game making channel how to start making a fan game and then I was directed to the uh, game maker 8.2 and the Renex engine servers and I think it was that day that I just threw a couple things together in the room editor, and I made one of the screens for the game then, I think. But um, prior to developing, prior to starting development on the game itself, I had made, I think, about 11 uh, FTFA-like or somewhat FTFA-like J-maps that uh, I think two of which are present in this game and 
two were made after I started because uh, all of the ones I had wanted, or a few of the ones I'd wanted to add were, they didn't connect properly. So I had to make one that started in the bottom right and ended in the top left to connect to the second screen, which is the first one that I made. The first FTFA-like screen that I made in JTool. And, um, yeah. So, I guess this will be the start of the talking about the jumps. Um, this jump, the first jump of the game, I think it's a very neat jump, but um, because it's a required 14 frame unless you bunny hop with the aligns you have, because the best align is this one, which gets you closest to this spike, and then you can just 13 frame under that, under the spike and the blocks there, and still make it, I think. But uh, with this align, which gets you, I think, farthest from the spike. No, that's the second farthest from the spike, which is your starting align. You have to either 14 frame or I think bunny hop and you can 13 frame. But it also requires a specific V align, which I think it's, I think the jump itself is cool because it does do the FTFA um, limiting jumps in the 32 pixel grid, but I don't think any jump in FTFA requires a specific V line. The double planes, there's the strat to get the 0.2 V line that makes it easier, but aside from that, there aren't any V line strats, I don't think. But uh, yeah, the first jump I think is really cool, and I think it captures the essence of FTFA's first jump quite well where, like, I would say, and others have said that it's the hardest jump in the game, which FTFA's hardest jump is not the first one, but it's, if a beginner who's never, who's only played, like, 30 diff needle tries to play this game, they'll most likely get stuck on the first jump, because it's very precise and might get it every few attempts but that was similar to my experiences with FTFA and how it took like it took until I was good at needle to be able to do the first jump semi consistently and I still can't really consistently but um yeah I really I think the first jump is one of the more interesting jumps in the game, and I think it's, aside from the V-Line thing, one of the most FTFA-like things in the game. Uh, this jump is just a filler jump, and then the next one was originally quite a bit more difficult. The uh, This spike was a block, which makes it significantly harder, but um, as with the majority of the jumps in this game, uh, QED told me to nerf them because they were difficult, and um, for what I was originally going with, I probably shouldn't have nerfed the majority of the jumps in the game, but I think it definitely made it more playable, and it's a lot more fun now. Um, but yeah, that, that jump, um, became more of a filler jump than a super difficult jump. And then that one is very similar to the, uh, screen two jump into the corner that is like the hardest jump in the game. And then... Yeah, so the second save 
in practice mode, which is just easy mode, but I was told that I should put a practice mode in or something like that, so I did. And uh, this save, this first jump was originally, I think there was a block here, which made it just the first jump of the game, but in a different place, which, like, it's still pretty much the first jump, but it's not, and it's slightly easier, and I think it's a lot better for that jump to be there rather than that. I think it's a lot better for the first jump to be the first jump rather than in the middle of the screen, because it's overly precise to be halfway through the screen. And then this jump right here, um, something I didn't realize until after the game was released, I think, was that gates, or this jump was originally just a gate where it was, I think, this spike, and this was also a spike, and it was just a gate. But I didn't realize until more recently that one of the big aspects of FTFA is that every jump requires both a single and a double jump, which I did not do in a few places. And there's a part later that I still didn't do because I didn't realize. But um, yeah, so that jump was changed to not just a gate that you could single jump through, which it's a lot more interesting now. Um, it's not difficult at all, but it is significantly more interesting than just a gate. Um, this jump is one of my favorites in the game. I really like how it feels and how it looks. Um, it's an amazing jump. It was originally a bit lower, and you could set up a... There was a wall hug up here that you could set up so you could get as close as possible, but then I moved it up here and removed that, so... There was originally one down here as well after I moved it up, but I didn't like the way that looked, so now it's how it is. And uh, there's that. This part of the screen was changed a lot from before testing. Um, originally, it had a Super F and a uh, three-quarter diamond that you had to... Or a three-quarter drop diamond where there was a spike here and then this was a Super F but it's a lot easier and better now. Something I learned that QED told me in testing was that FTFA, not all of the jumps are the super difficult jumps, like the first one or this one. Uh, and it has quite a few filler jumps, more like this one. And I didn't originally realize that, so... The majority, like, I think this, the gate, and, like, this jump were the only easy ones on the screen. And it's a lot more manageable now. And, like, I probably wouldn't have beaten it nearly as quickly as I did if I didn't have that. And then uh, this jump, I think, is very interesting because you can't bonk through it. And um, it, it's also one of the harder jumps of the screen. It, it's a good choke jump, I think, like the plane in FTFA, screen one. Um, yeah, this screen, the this was the first screen I made for it, in my collection of FTFA like J maps, and. Um, it was originally a lot harder, like every screen here, um, but it got nerfed in testing. Um, also, this one, Kilgore, Kilgour, 
um, they told me that it looked unfinished because it originally had just the gameplay, which I didn't think about until they said that. And then I, which I think is a problem I had, which makes me glad that I found testers for this instead of just releasing it because of creator bias where you never, like, I was used to every part of the game before I sent it to testers, and then, like, I was initially kind of reserved about changing any of it, because I was used to it, and I, it was scary to me to have to change all the parts that I liked, but then I realized that it was a lot better after playing it for a few minutes, so... I'm I'm glad that they were there to help me uh, figure out what was wrong or bad with the game, and um, yeah. So this jump was originally this was this was originally a right facing spike, which um, it was fine then, but it's a lot more fun now because it's not just FTFA first jump. And you can actually, like, beat the jump now more than once every hundred attempts. And then that was originally a lot harder. Um, this was originally... There was 16... There was another 16 pixel block right here, which made it significantly more difficult. I, but I think I changed that before I sent out the tester version. Um, this jump was not changed at all, except maybe this was lowered by 16 pixels, this spike. I, I don't remember if I changed that before or after I sent it to testers, but, um, I think this jump is pretty cool. It, um, it's one of those jump as far as you can ones, and... Um, you do, and then you clear the jump. Uh, this marks the first of three ledges in the game, because apparently I really like ledges, and there's one in all of the other screens from the first. Um, this was, I think, originally a little bit easier, but um, this jump was a lot harder the first time, or before testing, and then it got nerfed a tiny bit so that I think there's another couple frames of leniency with it. But um, then this jump, which is similar to the first, and a choke jump, and now it's done. So uh, this jump, I don't... I like it, but... I don't know how FTFA like it is, but it's fine. It's not that bad. It's not nearly as bad as what Screen 4 does to the rest of the game in the original FTFA. So I think it's fine. Um, then an F jump into a ledge, and then this, which is one of the more FTFA like level or uh, jumps in the game where it that's pretty much the drop on screen one because it's a required five frame or i think you can do it with a four frame but i'm gonna say it's a required five frame into a double jump that requires you to be as far to the left as possible and then this one that jump is one of my least favorites because it's so easy to hit the top spike or the bottom spike at some point. And it's like in a really annoying position. Uh, this jump, I think in Mir's, Mir's clear, he doesn't do a bonk strat here, which I, I really wish he did because this is one of the coolest jumps in the game to me because you can just bonk through there and it's free but 
Um, then there's another drop like the other drops in the game, but um, this first part reminds me of it's not decession, but decadence. One of the first jumps in that, where you have to jump like at the side of the spike. It's more lenient than that because you don't have to not full jump for it, but it's still like where you have to get up to the side of it and then jump so you don't hit the spike at the bottom. I like, or the spike at the top. I like the way this jump feels. And you also have to be as close as possible to the first spike there. So then you just jump down here. And this was kind of my homage, I guess you could call it. That's not what that means. Maybe it is. But uh, this is, I was trying to recreate the first, um, the first screen climb at the end of it which is why it has easy jumps, something more difficult, and then uh, originally that corner was a plane, and uh, the top jump wasn't there, but I was told that it was difficult, so I changed it, and it's a lot better now. Um, so that's the uh, Fly Sky High climb and also, this and the first screen were the two that I made after I started making the game. The uh, second screen and this screen I made before... I think the first... the second screen was the first one I made, and this one was the fifth one I made. So... Um, yeah. Um, this first jump, I thought it was really cool because you had to, uh, like, you couldn't go higher than a 13 frame. And I thought that it was, or with some align, you can't go higher than a 13 frame. And I thought it was a really cool jump. And then at some point, either someone told me or I realized that you can just bonk through it. So, I call that the loser strat, but I started doing it, so it's not that much of a loser strat, or it is, depending on your perspective, but, um, yeah, and only, only yesterday, I think, I realized that I could have just put spikes here at some point, and I could have forced a not bonk but i think that would have screwed up this part so i just left it and it's fine it's not that big of a deal there are other parts that are worse and there are other worse unintended skips as you'll see in a minute but uh this jump is quite difficult and um if i can there that jump is one of the more difficult ones, and it, it's not my favorite. But um, one of my favorite parts about this part is that if you jump here, you can see part of the end area. And um, originally, the first few maps I made, I didn't use screen borders, so I had to account for that when I was making it into a game because I didn't. I wanted to have visible borders but this part used as much space as possible on the right so I just left it and I really like how it turned out because I really like how you can just jump and look to the right and see how it how part of it ends uh, this drop was originally uh, I think this was an up spike that was raised by 32 pixels, which it's it's better now. Um, as with the majority of the difficult jumps, or the majority of any jumps in this game, 
uh, difficulty does not equal enjoyment. And, like, I've kind of thought that this drop feels way too easy, and I still kind of think it does, but it's definitely more fun now, especially after doing the first part of the save and this jump. It's a lot more fun now than it was when it was in its original form. Uh, this is just a corner that uh, is just a corner and then a diagonal. Um, this part was, there was originally not a spike here and no platform here. And uh, I think one of my testers told me that I should change it and I was already thinking I kind of wanted to change it because um, it's just like the decadence jump I was talking about earlier where it was a turnaround, which I really don't... I'm really bad at turnarounds, especially ones like with sphincters where you have to like not hold any direction for one frame and then hold the other direction. So I'm really glad I was able to change that and... Uh, have it fit the layout of the room cause, or of this section because there was just nothing over here and it looks better and plays better now and um, now it's one of my favorite jumps in the game if I can do it so uh, then ah oh, crap I just realized that this is also one that doesn't require a double jump um, this this jump is the one that I'm talking about, but I was really angry for a minute when I watched Mirrors Clear because I thought that this required a double jump to get to here for some reason, but he doesn't double jump, so you can just jump there, and then uh, that's the third ledge. And then um, if you can press two keys on the same frame, uh, that's the end of the game, pretty much. And here's the final screen. Uh, it reminds me... It, it doesn't remind me that much of FTFA's final couple screens, where it's just the platform rising, but I don't... I don't remember if I didn't want to do that, because I wanted to be different, or if I just couldn't figure out how to make a platform move, which I don't think I could have, because this was, like, within three days of me starting using Game Maker. But um, I do like the way it is now, where it's closed off in the top left instead of just open. And then you have the staircase, and then... You have the staircase, and then the final jump, which... I believe you do have to be as close as possible to the spike. You get really close there, and then clear. And um, something I want to say before I talk about the clear screen is I really, this part, um, the way this screen looks changed. I think that was the thing, aside from some of the jumps, that changed the most. Um, and it didn't involve testers at all. It was just me not knowing how I wanted this to look. Because originally, there were blocks all there. And then at some point, I removed them. And then I... Uh, I don't know if I re-added them. But um, then I also moved this spike up and down some. For whatever reason. I... I think at some point I thought I would put it as close as possible to the player, but where you couldn't get past it. But that changed a lot, and that's just some trivia about the game. I don't think I will make it this time. Oh, I did. But um, the clear screen here, I really like the way the clear screen is. Because on practice mode, I added the quote, the quotation marks here, and I just thought that was kind of funny. And 
the the main reason I did that was so it, you could obviously tell if it was a practice clear or a uh, normal or hard mode clear, but I think this was the best way I could have done that. But yeah, that's I think that's pretty much the end of what I want to say about the game. I might put up some gameplay of the original version, or I might just already have interspersed that into the video. But I hope you enjoyed this bit of trivia about the game. Um, I'll sure enjoy having it out. So, uh, see ya.